Hello, YouTube. Paleontology and geology are closely related sciences, and it just so happens that sometimes geologists themselves do not expect to discover truly unique finds. For example, in 1987, from a depth of 1,635 meters, the fossils of a Procolophonid were raised. Well, Procolophon is a genus of lizard-like Procolophonid parareptiles that first appeared in the early Triassic or Induan of South Africa, Brazil, and Antarctica. It persisted through the Permian Triassic extinction event, but went extinct in the beginning of the early Middle Triassic. Apparently, it existed elsewhere on Earth. Meet the Insulophon Morachovskaya. This is a very curious representative of the ancient biota that lived in the Triassic period. Biota is the sum total of animal and plant life of a given region or period the equivalent of fauna and flora combined. Insulophon is a member of the Procolophonid family, a long extinct group of the so-called parareptiles. The history of the discovery of this seemingly ordinary animal is extremely curious. As mentioned earlier, the fossils were taken from the depth of 1,635 meters during the drilling of an oil well on the island of Kalguyev in Russia. Kalguyev Island is an island in the Nenets Autonomous Region of the Russian Federation, located in the southeastern Barents Sea, west of the Pechora Sea, to the northeast of the Kanyan Peninsula in the Arctic. It's a very interesting place. The fact is that for exploration of oil-bearing layers, so-called core drilling is often used when scientists capture a part of the rock with the center of the ring bit and deliver it to the surface. The raised rock is called a core. Often during drilling, geologists stumble upon layers rich in fossils. And their samples also end up in those cores. However, most often these finds are incredibly small they can be microscopic living creatures. But still, sometimes bigger things are found in the course. So more recently, it was possible to determine another terrifying extinction from the fossilized teeth of sharks from the Miocene sediments obtained by core drilling. However, the Russians came across a less revolutionary find. In 1983, Oil and gas fields were discovered on the island of Kalguyev on an area of 10 by 29 square kilometers. All these sources were dated to the Cherkaboskaya formation of the Lower Triassic, so scientists expected to stumble upon fossils. Tichvinsky is a distant relative of Insolophon. During the study of one of the cores, Geologist Marachovskaya was looking for vertebrate fossils, and she found a neat skeleton of procolophonid lizard was flaunted on the chip of a cylinder of strong gray sandstone. Outwardly, outwardly, it seemed it resembled the Burtensia that lived on the territory of Kazakhstan, and therefore it was called this way for some time. But, however, in 1992, the fossil ended up in the hands of scientists Novikov and Arlov, who separated it into new genus in Salafon, or in Salafon Marachovskaya. The skeleton of an already small creature was damaged. The skull was crushed during drilling. Only the base and back teeth of both jaws were preserved from it. However, this was enough for a more or less normal reconstruction. The skull of the insolophone was triangular with large eye sockets and unusual teeth. It is believed that all developed procolophonids possess so-called quasi-incisors or incisors modified from front teeth. 
However, here's what's curious. The para-reptile also had palatine teeth, like those of distant relatives of Procolophones, bulky periosaurs. Periosaurs, meaning cheek lizards, are an extinct clade of large herbivorous parareptiles. Members of the group were armored with osteoderms, which covered large areas of the body. Perhaps the insolophone was a relic representative of the procolophones that stood close to pariosaurids, but we cannot say anything for sure about this. It remains only to wait for more complete finds, and there is every reason for this. The Pishana Azorsk oil fields are rich in fossils of other animals, the remains of ancient lungfish Gnathorzica, and even other procolophones are known. We have a truly unique case before us. The location of the fossilized fauna was discovered not near the surface, but at a great depth, which makes it even more difficult, much more difficult and interesting to study it. And after all, it's one thing that we can safely dig up a couple of shells or bones, and another when you have to do a colossal job of extracting the core and then play the lottery with Mother Nature, looking for at least some bone in the core. However, Russian scientists are not discouraged, and perhaps they will soon delight us with more than one find from the amazing deposits of the island of Kalguyev. By the way, since the discovery was at more than 1.5 kilometers down below, it looks like this insolophon lived on an ancient continent, that dived under the Laurasian plate. Laurasia was, one, was the more northern of the two land masses that formed the part of Pangaea supercontinent from around 335 to 175 years ago. Um, the other one being Gondwana. It separated from Gondwana 200 to 15 to 175 million years ago, beginning the late Triassic period, during the breakup of Pangaea, drifting further north after the split, and finally broke apart with the opening of the North Atlantic Ocean. But I will not be surprised if the scientists discover something even more interesting in the bowels of the Arctic islands and in its waters. I can only go by distant rumors about strange observations in this remote Russian Arctic island. Let me tell you a few things about Kalguyev. Although Kalguyev Island does not stand out much in history, there are several interesting facts about it. One of them is that it takes about an hour and a half to get from the island to the continent by helicopter. A third of the time the flight takes place over the sea. In 1797, um, a Russian schismatic or Russian religious dissident community of 70 people tried to settle on Kalguev Island, but they failed because none of them was aware of the harsh climate of the island. All the people who arrived on the island at that time, they died. In 1554, Hugh Willoughby and his trading expedition heading to Novaya Zimbla uh, via Kalguyev Island mysteriously died. Six months later, their bodies were discovered by the Pomors, that's the Russian people who live up north under certain conditions which are not prevalent elsewhere in Russia. There is no tourism on the island like this. This is due not only to the harsh climatic conditions, but also to the fact that the nature here is quite poor poorly developed infrastructure, and a great distance from the continent. In addition to the fact there is nothing to see on the island, the accommodation of tourists is also problematic because apart from the personal housing of the population and small buildings for workers, there is nothing on the island, neither hotels nor other guest houses. Most people come here to work. And that's why it's not easy to really get more news about strange discoveries around the island and on the island too. In addition to oil, 
There are many other minerals on the island, such as gas, coal, and brown coal. However, work is being carried out only on oil production since the construction of expensive equipment is necessary um, to search for other formations of the earth crust. To date, a company called Arctic Neft directs all its forces and resources to the search, production, storage, and transportation of oil. On the island, the quality of oil is considered to be one of the best as it contains very little sulfur. Total oil reserves are estimated at about 11 million tons. I urge you to look at my other videos about the Russian Arctic strange phenomena from UFOs to USOs to strange discoveries at the bottom of the uh, Barents Sea and other seas. I think you will like it. And it will give you a panorama of how fascinating and really mysterious uh, that section of the Arctic is and how few people know about this. When I hear more about this island and, of course, about the general area of the Russian Arctic, that is uh, pertinent to my paranormal research, I'll let you know. If you like my videos and you can support my research, please do so through the links you will find in the description uh, to this uh, video. And I'll try uh, to bring you more videos uh, soon um, as I can. Um, you know, please tell others about my channel too. Thank you so much for your attention to my work.